Welcome to The Baking Journalist. Today's bread, salted French. Today's topic, what's a journalist anyway? Let's do it. Welcome to The Baking Journalist. I'm Tony Ganser, a journalist and sometimes a baker too. We're gonna try at least. Uh, today, like I mentioned, we're going to bake salted French bread, which is a fairly standard bread, hopefully fairly easy that we can all make uh, together. Uh, our ingredients for this bread, just to start off so you can gather them before we start talking about journalism, you're going to need at least six cups of flour, 2.5 packets of yeast. These are uh, quarter ounce packets of yeast. One and a half teaspoons of salt. One and a half teaspoons of sugar for the yeast. Two cups of warm water, also for the yeast. One tablespoon of cornmeal and optional is an egg. So you don't need that, but you can use it as I'll demonstrate. Um, you know, first of all, journalism when I say journalism, I have something in particular in mind. Uh, other people, when they talk about journalists or reporters, they may use that term interchangeably with the media, with pundits, with hacks, uh, anything under the sun. Somebody who talks and ends up in the newspaper or on cable TV, some people think is a journalist. I don't think that's the case. There are many flavors to journalists, just like there are many flavors to bread. So we'll talk a little bit about those distinctions here. But first, let's get into the bread. Let's get started here. So first, what you're going to do, you're going to mix your yeast. And I'm actually mixing types of yeast. I don't know if that's a no-no, but uh, I've been doing it and it seems to work. Okay, two cups warm water. Make sure it's not boiling water, which I have done and have killed yeast, and that bread did not taste good. So once you have this initial mixture in, uh, literally just start stirring it, and we're going to keep adding flour until hopefully we have those six cups or as much as you need. So journalists, for me, these are people with a particular set of skills who are working in the public's interests for the public, for the good of society, to inform people and really kind of talk about the victories that our society has, but also the tragedies. I'm gonna add in two more cups of flour. There's a tragic crime. Um, yeah, you know, covering the crime itself, that's a type of journalism, but um, you know, what about trends in that neighborhood? What has that neighborhood been going through? Did something lead to this particular crime, which maybe would help people understand a little better what's going on in the community at large? You know, that's, that's a richness of journalism, better illustrates the craft, in my opinion. Uh, but also, you know, maybe an organization gets together and does something amazing that's also a story. We need to hear about what's working. Maybe somebody's against the amazing thing and we need to talk to them too to find out why they're against it. Maybe they have a point. Um, you know, you're really trying to get multiple sides because society is so diverse and uh, the only way we can progress and learn and vote and make decisions in the right way is to have as much information as possible from all sides. And uh, that's an important part of journalism. I think that gets lost sometimes when we conflate those terms, pundits and hacks or whatever, when we talk about journalism. It's firming up. So we keep adding flour here until we have a pretty good consistency. 
and then we need to knead it for about 10 minutes. So what are, what are some of the skills that a journalist has to have, those particular set of skills? I mean, a journalist needs to be able to research, uh, do more than Google. I'm getting my hands dirty now, I'm jumping in. Um, uh, a journalist needs to know how to interview, how to ask questions, but also how to listen. That's a really important part in my view, because if you're not listening, if you come in with your own agenda, um, it's just not going to work because you need to be able to be willing to be surprised over the course of reporting. And some journalists don't want to be surprised. They know what they're going to get or they think they know what they're going to get. And then they just kind of go in, check the boxes to say that they had a comprehensive report, but really all they're doing is fulfilling their own, um, their own hypothesis. They, they had something in mind. They went out and only talked to people who fulfilled that idea and then they didn't learn anything and then their readers or listeners didn't learn anything either. That's not really journalism. This is glamorous bread baking now. And there are different kinds of journalists. I mean, for me, journalism, it's really a vocation. Uh, and what I mean when I say that is even when I'm not working, when I'm not speaking on the radio, when I'm not writing a story per se, uh, I'm still thinking like a journalist. If I'm talking to somebody, I'm listening as if I'm interviewing them. And that doesn't mean I'm interrogating them. It's just, I, I'm curious, I want somebody's perspective. And I've always said that empathy and cultural literacy are two of the most vital things uh, that a journalist can have and really anybody can have because we're just trying to understand where somebody's coming from. And admittedly, we all have very diverse experiences and opinions and a journalist needs to kind of be a shapeshifter in that we're talking to lots of people and trying to get lots of information. There is no science to this kneading of the dough. I'm, as you can see, I'm just flipping it over and over. It's kind of still sticky in there, so I'm bringing in some of this flour. I think technically we're at seven cups now, but, uh, you know, like I said, it's not a science. We're just feeling the dough, working with the dough. And we're almost ready here. So, you know, if, if I leave daily journalism and daily news one day and open a bakery, um, I'm still going to probably research in the same way and think the same way um, as, as I do when I'm in daily news because it's a vocation. Like I've been conditioned, I've been trained. Uh, and yes, I mean, in school, getting a journalism degree, but mostly just talking to people over almost 15 years now in various places and situations and, you know, be it a boardroom or, or out on the streets of Cairo, you're just talking to people. You're just trying to, trying to understand where they're coming from. You know, what we're going to do now is, uh, get another bowl. Uh, you can spray nonstick spray in there. You can use oil, you can grease it up. But what we need a clean bowl, because this one obviously is not clean anymore. I've prepared this one in advance. We're going to take our dough that has been worked and kneaded. And we're going to just make a ball here. And we're going to let the yeast do their job for about 10 minutes. The recipe is 10 minutes or until it's doubled. So that's a, a rough estimate. I'm going to take the bowl, toss it in, and then literally just let that bowl chill. Not chill. It needs to be in a warm place, but chill out is what I meant.
and you can see that it is bigger. Um, I don't know if I'll say it's doubled, but it's bigger and uh, it's time to move on. So <laughs> that's, that's what we're going to do. Uh, so we already have flour here because of when we were kneading our dough. And uh, the next step is to shape your loaves and uh, let them rest another 10 minutes. So, you know, part of baking is hurry up and wait, just like uh, part of reporting sometimes that, uh, you know, you think you're going to move forward, but uh, not really. You need to wait a little longer. I've got just a baking sheet. That's what uh, I'm going to use here. We're done with the yeast. Um, again, nonstick spray or uh, oil or just, just grease the pan. And for this one, we're going to take cornmeal, actually. These are looking mighty risen and they will rise even more. These are probably a little too big. Again, it's not a science. You have to look at your dough and see what is working. So I just have a little knife here. I'm going to slice once, twice, three times on each loaf. So we've, we've cut this uh, egg wash, totally prepped. It has risen a lot, so we're ready to bake now. So oven at 375, and we're going to bake for about 20 minutes and then do a pit stop. We're gonna add a little egg wash. I'm not gonna show you that. It's just brushing it on one more time. So the next time I check in with you, these puppies should be done. So stand by. So just like we have to put hard work into finding good news, good information, figuring out what's really happening in our world today, we also put in hard work to make this bread. So hopefully you can enjoy the bread and you find a news outlet you can enjoy too. Be sure to uh, hit that subscribe button, that like button, share this if you think somebody's interested in either journalism or bread, either one, I don't mind. And until next time, I'm Tony Ganser, your baking journalist. Enjoy.